Welcome back. In the last session, there began a discussion of product development. The essence of product development is establishing product features which respond to customer needs. In this session, the focus narrows to some tools used to evaluate product features. We have seen that product development often requires extensive analysis of product features. Of the many possible methods for conducting the analysis, we've selected four as especially useful. They are saleability analysis, criticality analysis, competitive analysis, and analysis to avoid failures. Let's examine these tools one at a time, starting with saleability analysis. Saleability analysis assures that the product will attract customers. If the product fails to attract customers, other analysis is academic. In designing the Taurus and Sable automobiles, Ford Motor Company used a straightforward approach to saleability. Identify the important features which influence the purchase decision, then concentrate planning resources to make all those features best in class. The assumption was that the resulting automobile would be saleable. Such straightforward analysis isn't always sufficient. Saleability of product results from numerous forces, and some of these don't seem to be closely related to quality. An example is the demographic pattern, the makeup and trend of the population. Study of demographics is certainly a part of business planning. The business interpretation of demographic data is then used in quality planning, especially during product development. The term saleability applies to internal customers as well as to external customers who provide your income. A training director concludes that a certain training program would benefit some of the company personnel. Efforts to convince colleagues are often called selling the program. Study and analysis of customers' behavior is an important component of saleability analysis. Some product lines are marketed on the basis of a standard product supplemented by options. Analysis of the purchase of these options then leads to decisions as to which options to offer as standard equipment in future models. Customer demands for products which differ from standard can lead to changes in what is regarded as standard. A company in the health industry was processing 700 special orders annually with an average delivery time of three months. Analysis showed that a relative few part numbers accounted for 95% of the special orders. The remedy was to convert these frequent specials into standard products. The delivery time dropped dramatically. 85% of the orders were now delivered within two days. The number of special orders dropped from 700 to 200 per year. And all of this was done at a substantial cost reduction. In some industries, the unsuccessful bids dominate the successful bids by a wide margin. It's useful to analyze the results retrospectively in an effort to discover what features of the bids dominated in success or failure. In many cases, knowledge of customer behavior is not an adequate basis for decision making. It's necessary in addition to know the reasons behind that behavior. Those reasons can come from supplementary information, such as customer perceptions and customer opinions. A common example of discovering customer perceptions is the study of consumer preferences. Consumers are offered samples of competing products. After use of the products, the consumers state their preference. Let's look at a classic case from the history books. They're yours again. Eversharp Shake Injector Blades for the world's fastest, safest, smoothest shave. Just insert the automatic blade changer in your Eversharp Shake Injector Razor. Push, pull, click, click, and you're ready to shave. 20 blades, 75 cents at good stores everywhere. This is Charles Irving. In the early 1950s, the Schick Company introduced a new shaving system called the Schick Injector Razor. Its new easy blade changing feature was highlighted by a memorable advertising slogan. Push, pull, click, click, change blades that quick. The Gillette Company conducted a defensive market research study to determine the impact of Schick's new design on consumers. Samples of three competing shaving systems, Gillette, Schick, and Gem, were given to each of several hundred consumers. They were asked to use each of the systems for an entire month. Then, each consumer was asked to rank the various qualities as to their order of importance, and also to rank the competing systems as to each of the qualities. 
The study revealed two important facts about the customer's perceptions. First, ease of blade changing was the least important quality on the list. And second, the competing systems were equal with respect to ease of blade changing. These results were enough to convince Gillette that ease of blade changing wasn't a reason to invest in a new blade changing system. Suppliers are understandably hungry for information as to the reasons behind customer perceptions and opinions. Why do customers buy or not buy this product? Why do customers prefer one product over another? To secure such information, suppliers use various channels. The sales force, the customer service personnel, market research studies. The hope is that the customers will be able to identify those quality-related features which explain their behavior. Sometimes this hope is realized. More usually, the answers are blurred by the numerous variables which enter into the customer's decision-making processes. The situation is at its worst when you ask for predictions. Would the customer buy this product at this price? We can obtain answers, but the reality is missing since the customer is not faced with making an actual choice and outlay. You also need to assess the saleability of products to internal customers. For example, the budget office may issue new procedures and forms. These will simplify the work of the budget office. But if they cause added work and delay to the internal customers of the budget, the new procedures won't sell. You must assess saleability before you issue the new procedures. Next, let's turn to criticality analysis. Customer needs are not equally important. User safety or continuity of electric power supply are examples of customer needs which are obviously critical. A useful tool for discovering critical customer needs is criticality analysis, a process for identifying the vital few features so that they will receive priority of attention and resources. Here are some of the more usual reasons for classifying something as critical. Threat to human health and safety, or to the environment. These threats may be inherent in the product, or arise from user ignorance or misuse of the product. Product features may respond to legislated mandates, such as restrictions imposed to conserve energy. Some proposed product features may require substantial investment in facilities, inventories, special processes. The challenge to the product developers is to evolve alternatives which require smaller investments. Product features may have a critical influence on the continuity of service. The industrial society is dependent on the continuing performance of technological goods and services. Some product features may cause delays in developing a source of supply, establishing an adequate operating process, or training and certifying workers. To assure that appropriate action is taken with respect to critical features, you can use a criticality analysis spreadsheet. An example is the critical component register, a form of spreadsheet used by Rank Xerox Limited. This spreadsheet is reproduced in detail in your action guide. Here the application is to product components of a printer. Each component is listed on a row. One of these components is the platen cover. Categories of criticality are listed in the columns. High cost, long lead, handling sensitivity. The analysis shows that the quality planners have identified eight criticalities with respect to the platen cover including three criticalities shown here. A more detailed analysis of the platen cover and other components and assemblies is then carried out, which shows the actions plan to respond to the several types of criticality and indicates responsibility for the actions. For example, with respect to long lead time, commercial operations will monitor the tool schedule for progress. Let's now look at the subject of competitive analysis, comparison of your product and its features with those of the competition. Evaluation of competitiveness of product features is essential because clients make such evaluations when deciding which products to buy. You can begin by tabulating your product features alongside those of competitors. This comparison identifies the presence or absence of specific features. The best-in-class analysis, which Ford used in planning the Taurus and Sable, went further. It began with identifying 400 key features, 
Then it compared performance of those features to the competition. In some product lines, the competitors are so numerous that full-scale competitive analysis can become very costly. Companies solve this problem by use of the Pareto principle. They concentrate on the key product features or on the key competitors or both. One electronics company conducts competitive analysis with respect to its three principal competitors in each product line. Another approach to competitive analysis is through the study of product differences. Competitive products can differ in quality along a spectrum which runs from so large that it's obvious to a very small difference. To evaluate product differences, you must identify the product or service features that are most important from the customer's viewpoint. You can then make a feature-by-feature -feature comparison against the competition, evaluating each feature on a common scale, say from 0 to 10, where 10 is best. The score for each feature is weighted according to its relative importance to the customer. The total weighted score for each product or service is an evaluation of quality from the customer's viewpoint. Competitive analysis of this sort provides a valuable basis for design and marketing strategy. The use of competitive quality advantage is illustrated by this case example. A maker of power tools succeeded in improving their reliability to a level well beyond that of competing tools. A competitive evaluation weighted to favor low operating costs suggested that these power tools were quality leaders in the construction market. A team was then sent to secure field data from users on the cost of using these high reliability tools versus using those of competitors. Based on these data, the differences in reliability were converted into operating cost savings to the users. After an advertising campaign which featured those cost savings, the company was able to raise prices of its tools without resistance. The fourth method of product analysis is analysis to avoid product failure. While the top priority in product development is a saleable product, the product feature should also respond to the need to minimize operations errors, deliver discrepancies, and failure rates. Product failures add to your costs to an extent which can be shocking. The failures also add to your client's costs and, as a result, are a threat to future saleability of the product. The structured approach to product development makes specific provision for guarding against failures. The approach does so by establishing features such as reliability and uptime as targets to be met during product development. A major source of product failure is carryover of failure-prone features of prior products. The product features which result from product development are a mixture of features carried over from prior products, features carried over but modified to correct prior weaknesses or to adapt to new needs, and features newly developed. Within this mixture, the carryover usually dominates the newly created by a considerable margin. To avoid carryover problems, the product developer must know and understand the troublesome predecessor features. Carryover of failure-prone features is a disease which has destroyed many healthy product lines. The original producer of dry copiers enjoyed a remarkable growth in sales and profits during the years when its patents gave it a monopoly. However, its products were quite failure prone. As the business grew, it was necessary to bring out a procession of new models to perform added functions and serve new applications. To a considerable degree, these new models carried over the failure prone features of the old. Year after year, the same 10 failure-prone features accounted for the bulk of field service calls. Eventually, competitors found ways around the patents, came out with products of distinctly lower failure rates, and took over much of the market. Carryover of failure-prone features is widespread. Our experience has shown that most often the reason is that the responsibility for diagnosis and remedy of chronic problems is so vague that such problems just go on and on. What's more, the prime responsibility of the product developers hasn't been to remedy those long-standing quality problems. Their prime responsibility has been to develop new product features which create new sales. 
And in many cases, the product developers don't even have access to clear information on product failures. The company's quality information system does not routinely collect, analyze, and identify field failures or the cause of failure. The most subtle form of carryover of costly wastes has been to include them in the budgets or cost standards. The resulting inflated budgets hide the wastes. They disconnect the alarm signals. Whoever meets such budgets is doing things right, but may not be doing the right things. In some companies, the stated quality policies require that new models of products may be put on the market only if the reliability is at least equal to that of the models they replace and of competitors' models as well. These policies are then enforced by requiring the product developers to prove, through data from laboratory, prototype, and field testing, that the policies have been met. Many companies have methods in place which verify performance against reliability goals. They construct mathematical models of system reliability, then use estimates of reliability of the elements of the system to predict the reliability of the total system. Weak spots, poor design decisions, or poor selection of parts or system elements can be corrected early in the development cycle, thereby saving much money and time. This session addressed four principal tools for analyzing product features. Saleability analysis seeks answers to the question, is there a market for this product? Criticality analysis focuses on the vital few product features so they may receive priority attention. Competitive analysis involves feature-by-feature -feature comparison of your product against the competitors. The purpose is to plan a strong competitive quality position into your product. Analysis to avoid failures includes establishing goals and targets for product reliability and availability. It also includes examining previous product performance information to eliminate failure causes. Once the product features are established, there is a need to establish an optimum goal for each feature. Optimizing the product design is the subject of the next session. I'll see you then.